How's it going with the radio tour? Yeah, great. It's really good fun. People are really open and uh, yeah, keen to hear about what we're doing and sort of like the idea that we're on the road with it. So how would you describe the film, Stalker? Uh, well, I guess you'd call it an intense domestic thriller love story twinged with cookery, drugs and investigative dialogue. That was a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> Very good description. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything I'd said before. That's always my challenge. Don't yeah. repeat myself. So how did you end up getting involved with the film um, initially and what was it about the project that drew you into it? Well, John rang and asked me if I was keen to work on a two-hander with him and, of course, I said yes. I'd been <laughs> kind of out of the limelight for a while um, bringing up my two daughters that sing the title track, Stalker, yep. on the film. Um, and, you know, I've just come... I've been just sort of stepped back into wanting to be... just being an actress again. That's my kind of love when I'm not being the mama. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, the opportunity to then work on on a, on a feature film with John and I met Chris Merrick and, and be able to dive into a role like Emily was, um, you know, too good to be true. It was yeah. the most fabulous role. Um, you know, she's not, she's a good girl, she's a bad girl, she's interesting, she's a grown up, she's a child. Um, it was, uh, you know, kind of everything and then some that um, I could have ever dreamed for. Sounds good. Um, what type of reaction have you been receiving from the tour thus far? Yeah, people have been loving it. Like, seriously, I've been surprised at how much people have liked it. They've loved the inappropriate nature of the film. They've loved the fact of seeing two older, you know, actors really going for it in kind of, you know, every way, um, emotionally and kind of putting ourselves out there. They love the music. They've loved the fact that they didn't know where the film was taking them. And in every twist and turn, they were baffled and confused. So, and that's been across all age groups. So from, you know, the you know, 15s up to your bloody 500s, no, up to your, like, <laughs> You know, old, we've, we've had quite a lot of older people come and see it too, and they're just all, I think they like to see a representation of that's interesting, of older people still who are interesting. Has your family seen the film? or? Um, my daughters have seen it, and um, they said, Mum, you're hot. <laughs> I figure, if your daughters can say that, and they're in their early 20s, yeah. I must be okay. They didn't do the stick their fingers down the throat and want to chuck up, so I figure. <laughs> yeah, that's Mum, good then, okay. isn't it? Yeah. They wrote the title track, did they? How did they feel about writing the song? Oh, they didn't actually write it. It was Mark D'Angelo and Craig Jansen at Backlot Studios oh, they, wrote it. Oh, they sung it, did they? They sung it and they kind of reworked it a little bit. And um, many of them are great harmony singers as well as singer-songwriters and they certainly understand structure of a song. So for them, they took the what um, Mark and Craig had, had made, they rewrote a bit of the lyrics and definitely um, just rework the way the song sat to kind of uh, slide it into the feel of, you know, like a Bond, James Bond theme song for oh, the yeah. film and uh, really finessed it. That's good they got involved with the film with you. Yeah, look, you know, we're really close and we do lots of projects together. So when the opportunity came up to... Because John and I sang that song first. Oh, and yeah. Then we decided, oh, it really needs sort of haunting other vocal to it. And then we brought Maddie and Mem in and um, they just smashed it. So we went, oh, yeah, did just put them on. They're great. You play Emily. Tell me a little bit about your character and preparing for the role leading up to filming and that kind of thing. Emily is a complex being. She probably should have had therapy a long time ago <laughs> um, and hasn't. She's got a messed up backstory, if you go into that, you know, the things that happened to her as a kid. Um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to work with Elizabeth Kemp, who comes from the New York Acting Studios. She came to Melbourne and did a thing called 
the Jungian Dream Workshop Week, which meant we worked with our dreams and the, and the character that we wanted to work on. So I brought Emily into that workshop and it was a week long. Some days were like 21 hours. It was crazy. So I got to really explore every facet of Emily. And if you're working with Jung, then you're working with the shadow, which is the dark side. And that certainly um, was appropriate in getting to know that darker side of the character of Emily because there's a part of her that's definitely hidden away that we get to uncover when we go into her home. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing. How was the co-directing with John and starring alongside him? Well, John and I have known each other since we were kids. You know, over 30 years we've known each other and we've worked together a couple of times. So always working with John is kind of like working just with a really good pal. And, you know, we're comfortable with each other. We trust each other. We respect each other. We know how to push each other. We're happy to, you know, talk things out and get the best out of each other. So it wasn't ever weird. That's what we do as artists, you know. We like to work you work with people. It's a collaborative process. So it was really just an extension of that. We were fortunate that we were able to do that. It really happens. We had to be careful that we didn't become self-indulgent in not having an outside eye watching us. But we cared enough about the project and each other to make sure that we, we kept each other on track. It was really good working with John. Will you work with him again, do you think? I will work with him again. We get on really well. We, um, like I say, we've known each other for more than half our lives. So for us, when you find you know, people that you like to work with, then you tend to come back and work with them again and again. Did you have a further desire to do more directing in the future? Well, I've worked as a theatre director for a long time. When I stepped away from being an actress and to put more time into just being a mum and bring up my kids, I started directing more. So I was directing a lot of theatre and certainly directing film is an extension of that. For me, it's about getting good performance. I, I love directing. I've been doing some while we've been doing this promotional tour as well. Yeah, it's a part of me that yeah I enjoy very much. But for the moment, I had unfinished business with my actress. So... She needed to come back and, and do some work. What message do you believe audiences will take away from this film? Oh, that people are probably a bit messed up. <laughs> <laughs> or that everybody's got something going on that we don't know about. That people are complicated. Passion is complicated. Um, hopefully that Australians are making great films with interesting characters. That their money is well spent if they come and watch Stalker. What projects are you currently working on? Well, I've got a little directing project. Uh, it's a play that goes into primary schools that works with kids with anxiety. Oh. And I've got two short films, one called Pillars and the other is called The Entrepreneur. And then there's two feature films that we've got close to being complete. Lots going on. <laughs> and do you have future projects that you can reveal that you'll be involved in or was that those ones there? No, I have a very small role in the feature film Holding the Man. But oh, that's yes. a great and important film to me because Tim Conagrave and I lived together when we first moved out of home. So seeing Tim's book realised as a film and then being asked to be involved, Neil Armfield, the director, wanted everyone that knew Tim to have something to do with the film. So I feel really privileged to be in that. And I did some work on a feature film that will be coming out, I think, early next year. It's called What Time Is My Heart? Um, great film directed by Romy Trower uh, about a girl with multiple personality disorders and a boy with OCD and I play their psychiatrist which is yeah. a nice change from Emily yeah straight laced bit of an opposite yeah it's completely opposite <laughs> so some fun things thank you